In this video, you're going to learn how to use the XLOOKUP function in Microsoft Excel. For years and years, one of the most commonly used functions in Excel was the VLOOKUP function. And there's also an HLOOKUP. And these are two very powerful functions. But the fairly new XLOOKUP function blows both of them away. And for many of you, you'll never again need to use VLOOKUP or HLOOKUP. So what is the purpose of XLOOKUP? It basically enables you to take information that you have and use that information to look up related information. So you can see here, I have an employee list for a fictional business. We have employee names at the left. We have their employee number, department, salary, etc. And let's say that I need to look up an employee based on their employee number. Maybe every time they log into a website or fill out a form, they put their employee number. I could then use XLOOKUP to search this document for their employee number, and then I could produce their name. And in this case, I also want it to produce the department that they're part of and their salary. So I'm gonna click here on H2, and I'm gonna write my formula that uses the XLOOKUP function. I'll type equals XLOOKUP, and as I type, you can see Excel recommends that I use the XLOOKUP function. I could just click on that to select it, or I could keep typing. Next, I'll put the left parenthesis. And as always at this point, Microsoft Excel is giving me some tips to help me successfully write the rest of this formula. Excel is now looking for the lookup value. In other words, what is the information that I know? Well, in this case, I know the employee number right? In my example, I said the employee numbers are recorded, maybe when they use the internet or when they fill out a form. So that's what we know. We know their number, but we don't know their name, department, and salary. So I could type in a specific employee number, perhaps this one here. So I could type that out right in the formula if I want to, but it's more powerful in many cases to, instead of typing it, just click on a cell where you will eventually type the number or the item that you want XLOOKUP to look for. In my case, I've already written the number. It's here at the left in cell G2. So I'll click on G2. And of course, I can change this number later, but the formula is always gonna be looking at whatever is in cell G2, and that's the lookup value that it will search for. Next, I put in a comma. You can see Excel is now looking for the lookup array. Where do I want Excel to search for whatever's in G2? Do I want it to search in column A? No, it's not gonna find this number in column A. Well, what about column B? No, not there either. I need to select C because that's where employee numbers are stored in this spreadsheet. You can see what Excel did. It put in C colon C. In other words, all of column C. I'll put in a comma. Next, Excel is looking for what's called the return array. In other words, I know the lookup value. I've specified where to look for that lookup value, column C. Now, what is it that I want to be returned? What is it that I want to see? Well, in this case, I want it to return the name of the employee. So that's easy. I'll just click on column A, just right here on the A. It selects the entire column. Or again, I could type A colon A. I'll put in a comma. Now, what if it's not found? What if Excel searches all of these employee numbers, does not find this number, so it can't return a name? So what do I want it to return? Well, I could just skip this. I could delete that comma, put in my right parenthesis. You don't even have to put the parenthesis in at the right if you don't want to. Tap enter, and you can see it worked. So it works without putting in anything for if not found. But in this case, I think I do want to put something in there. I'll put in a quotation mark, and I'll just type the word none, and then another quotation mark, and then I could put a comma in. And at this point, all I need to do is tell Excel what kind of a match am I looking for. Am I gonna require Excel to find an exact match to this employee number? In my case, yes, because with employee numbers, close doesn't mean that much, right? It's pretty much gotta be exact. And notice that that is the default. So if you just skip this step, it will default to exact match, which is great, and that's a little bit of a change from VLOOKUP. If you don't want exact match, you can see the other options here. These are some really great options to have. I'll just put a zero, so it'll be exact match. And again, I could have just left that blank. I put in a comma, and the very last step is what kind of a search do I want it to do? Do I want to search from the top to the bottom, first to last, or do I want to search from last to first, starting at the bottom? There's binary search, sorted ascending, binary search, sorted descending. 
These ultimately don't matter that much, so I'm just going to stop there at exact match, put in my right parenthesis, and again, I could have left off the zero, I could have left off the none in quotes, I could have just stopped here. Instead, I'll stop here after the zero, tap enter on the keyboard, and you can see Excel has used that XLOOKUP formula to search column C for this number. It found it. Let's find out where it found it. Okay, there it is. And it corresponds to Nick Robinson, who's in the communications department. Okay, so let's go back up to the top. Nick Robinson. So it did work. It did find the right employee. Now, for those of you that have watched my other Excel tutorials, you know that I don't have to repeat those same steps for the next employee number. I don't have to start the formula all over again. All I would have to do is click on Nick Robinson. And if you think about it, it looks like I'm clicking on Nick Robinson, but I'm actually not. This cell doesn't really contain Nick Robinson. It contains this formula, which produces, in this case, Nick Robinson. So if I click here in the lower right corner of the cell on the autofill handle, that little green square, I can click and hold and pull down and it will copy and extend the contents of H2 down the spreadsheet. So let's go down and I'm not gonna stop here with row six, I'm gonna go one more to row seven and you'll see why. By using the autofill handle, notice what happened with my formula. It did copy the formula and paste it, but it also extended the numbers. It adjusted the row number, basically. In H2, you can see the row number is G2. And in H3, you can see that the number is G3. So it extended that number. It, it adjusted it up. Same with the rest of these. So pretty quickly, I'm able to look up employee numbers and return employee names. Now this one here returned a zero. Why? Well, it's because G7 in this case is blank. Now what if I just put in some random employee number that's not gonna be in my list here? If I try that, notice that it says none. And it does that because I included that in my formula. But if it's just completely blank, instead of none, it just says zero. Now what I just demonstrated of using XLOOKUP to take an employee number and look to the left to find out the employee name, that was not possible to do using the old VLOOKUP. VLOOKUP is not capable of looking left to get its information. It has to look to the right. And so that's one of the nice things about XLOOKUP. It doesn't matter if it's left, right, up, down. It can look that direction and find the information. So let's try the same thing again, but this time with department. I'll type equals XLOOKUP. I could base this one off of the employee name or off the employee number. It doesn't really matter. I'll go with the employee number again, comma. And once again, I need to put in the lookup array. In other words, what column or what range should Excel look in to try to find the employee number? Well, it's column C. So I click on C to select the entire column, comma. What's the return array? What's the information I care about that I want to learn about? And C, in this case, it's department. So I'll click on column D. I'll put in a comma, in quotes I'll put the word none, in case a number's typed in but it doesn't match any of the employee numbers. And then in this case I'm going to skip the match mode and the search mode, they don't really matter much in this example. And if you recall, XLOOKUP defaults to an exact match. So it's going to try to find an exact match of this number and that's exactly what I want. So I'll just put in my right parenthesis, tap enter on the keyboard, and Nick Robinson works in the communications department. I can use the autofill handle and I can just double click on it to extend it down the page so I don't have to click and drag. You can see it found the department of each of these employees. And we can do the same thing with salary, X lookup, the lookup value again could be the employee number, but I want to show you that it doesn't have to be. So I'm gonna select the employee name this time, comma, lookup array. Where are they gonna find the employee names? Here in column A this time, comma, What's the return array? What's the information I'm looking for that I want to see? It's salary, so that's column E. At this point, I should put in the right parenthesis, but I'm just gonna tap enter to demonstrate that you don't really have to, and it produces the salary. I can just double click on the autofill handle to fill that down the page, and we're good to go. I'm just gonna copy paste another employee number there, just so you can see it is working in all of the cells here. At this point, if I want to, I can select J, and on the Home tab, Home Ribbon, in the Number group, I can change that number to be Currency, so you can tell it's a salary. And I might also want to select this range and kind of set it apart from the rest of the spreadsheet by putting in a background color. 
So now I could use this part of the spreadsheet as a form that I could use to look up an employee number or a series of numbers all at once. So I'll just clear out the contents of those cells and I'll just take a few of these numbers, paste them in, and you can see the names are looked up, the department and the salary, and they're all produced so that I can see them. So I hope you can see some of the potential value in using XLOOKUP. It's so much easier, more straightforward, and powerful to use than the old VLOOKUP, and it also replaces HLOOKUP as well. I love the fact that it can look either left or right, and then I also like that it defaults to an exact match. Now, as Microsoft often does with its newer functions, they're rolling it out gradually. It's available right now in Microsoft 365 versions of Excel and also these other versions. Eventually, I would expect it to show up in all modern versions of Microsoft Excel. If you don't have XLOOKUP in your version of Excel, you should definitely check out my tutorial on VLOOKUP. And then, of course, please do check back and watch this video once you do have access to XLOOKUP. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you found it to be helpful. If you did, please like, follow, and subscribe. And when you do, click the bell so you'll be notified when I post another video. If you'd like to support my channel, you can do that through my Patreon account or by buying channel merch. And you can learn more about those options in the description below this video.